Many depredation problems occur during the colder months when deer and elk migrate from Idaho's high country to their traditional wintering grounds at lower elevations. Haystacks on adjacent ranches may prove very tempting to these animals. Conventional wildlife management practice calls for paneling haystacks out of reach of wild animals. Another solution is a specific depredation hunt designed to reduce the number of deer and elk in a problem area. But in eastern Idaho, there's a special place where none of these traditional wildlife management practices can be applied. When problems began occurring, a much more dramatic and costly plan had to be devised to remove these offending animals from the area. They call it the Big Lost. It's actually named for a river that eventually loses itself underground. But the Big Lost could easily be named for the incredible feeling of isolation here. The sense that this land has remained untouched forever. But locked between Big Southern Butte and the Lost River Range lies a federal security area known as the Idaho National Engineering Laboratory, or INEL site. Established in 1949 by the Atomic Energy Commission, the site is 900 square miles of strictly restricted property set aside as a reactor testing station. This means the area is closed to most human activity. But when the resident elk herd became a problem, human activity exploded in the form of 40 biologists and two jet ranger helicopters and their pilots. The problems here are unique. Depredations occur throughout the year, but these animals mainly cause problems in the spring and summer months. Everything fine? Got blood? The problem is that there isn't a lot of free water on the, on the site. This leaves us with a growing elk population that spends a fair amount of its time uh, raiding into agricultural fields for water and green forage and uh, doesn't provide a lot of benefit because people can't come to the site to view the elk, they can't come here to hunt the elk, and so uh, they're a liability. Since hunting isn't allowed, the only answer seems to be to remove the elk from the INEL site. The plan is to capture 30 animals, mainly cows and calves, and release them in a new area. The elk are captured using helicopters and a device called a net gun. In the lead ship, the gunner shoots a 16-foot square net that entangles the animal. The second helicopter hovers nearby, while the mugging crew jumps out to wrestle the elk. They need to be aggressive. Once the muggers hobble and blindfold the elk, she'll be slung beneath the helicopter and flown back to base camp. Elk first began appearing on the INEL site in the early 80s. By 1991, the original group of 20 had boomed to an estimated population of 200 animals. Well, this is an expensive operation, but uh, the other thing to consider is that uh, the department paid $300,000 in depredations uh, for elk and antelope on ranches adjacent to the site, site in 1988, 1989. Ready? On three. Three. Oh, gee. The costs add up to about $500 per elk for a total of $15,000. Funding for the operation was provided by Fish and Game, the Forest Service, the INEL, and the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. This 30-animal mud rodeo won't be enough to end the depredation problems on the INEL site. Another operation will have to be set up later in the year to remove more elk from the area. Nice job, dude. Great. Hey, guys. There they go. But the good news is that these animals will be pioneers of a sort. They'll be joining earlier transplants in establishing a new population of elk near the Pebble Creek area, southeast of Pocatello. Biologists have termed the INEL project Operation Flying Elk. It marks the first time these animals have been moved, carrying them in special bags slung beneath a helicopter. <laughs>